What's going on, YouTube? Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click the bell. On today's show, we're going to be talking about players that have risen up our rankings throughout training camp. We're also going to be talking stash of trash. Those players at the very end of the draft, are they worth hanging on to and seeing what they can be after week one? Don't miss a moment. I don't know who you are, but I do know what you need. I can tell you, I know some gentlemen with a very particular set of skills. Skills they have attained over a long career of studying tape and statistics. Skills they want to share to make you a nightmare for the rest of your league. Head over to www.ultimatedraftkit.com and order it right now. You will be prepared for your draft. Your league will be frightened of you. And you will kill them. Foot Clan, we're all kind of looking for a bright spot right now, are we not? Mm-hmm. Well, I got one for you. There's a hilarious new series on Apple TV Plus starring Jason Sudeikis called Ted Lasso. It's about an American football coach who heads to England to take a shot at managing one of the world's most competitive professional soccer teams. It's an age-old story. Of course. If you like a show with big laughs and a lot of heart, then this is the one you've been looking for. Watch Ted Lasso right now. On the Apple TV app, subscription required for Apple TV+. Plus. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Hey! Welcome in. I'm still falling. Tuesday. <laughs> we've broken into September. Oh, wait. Is that true? Oh, yeah. my is goodness. September? <laughs> Jason just looked at his watch. <laughs> it's September. Uh, that was not a gag. I, it's really September? Yes. Yes. Oh, all right. Time is nothing. Time is infinite. Time yeah. is all. Time is Frank Gore. Welcome into the show, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Appreciate you with us, Andy, Mike, and Jason. We have a stash or trash episode today. If you're a new listener, welcome in. Excited to be with you for this upcoming fantasy football season. We like to take a holistic approach to fantasy football, bringing you uh, not just the stats and the analytics, but also some, you know, contextual advice, some things that can help you have an advantage over your league mates and help you, uh, you know, take the next step. A lot of people reach out and they're like, I just keep finishing fourth. I just keep finishing third or just outside of the playoffs. And you just got to turn a couple dials. Yeah. The whole point is championship. And, you know, it, while we're, you know, talking about the ultimate draft kit and we're, we're, you know, wanting to, well, first of all, the draft is literally the most fun day of the year in fantasy football, but I've said this many times in the past. You don't win your championship at the draft. Last year, we won the sleeper bowl, which, you know, Juju and Ninja and Tim, the tap man, we were the champions there. I believe our first round pick was Juju and our third round pick was Devonta Freeman. Some injuries got in the way of those being uh, good picks, and we won the championship. So stick with us. Uh, it will be a fun year. Uh, Jason, will the big shimmy slide whistle make a draft day appearance? Ooh, probably. <laughs> I mean, let's just, this is who I am. Uh, more, is, more big shimmies or more slide whistles? What is, Probably more slide whistles for y'all's picks. Okay, okay. Every time you, you know, take. Some old injured guy. Mm. I'll give you a good slide whistle. Oh, I do that all the time. I had a CBS draft last night. AJ Green is now a member of my team once again. Had him last year. He was the foundation of a championship team. <laughs> he was your mascot last year. He was my year. mascot last year, and <laughs> I brought him back. You did win the championship there, though. <laughs> I, I did, with AJ Green sitting on my bench and Michael Gallup in my lineup instead. Uh, quick question of the day. Who has risen in your rankings the most during training camp? Mm. Jason, hard knocks is tonight, and your answer. Yeah. Oh, it, you got the hard knocks bump. I, look, I might be getting the hard knocks bump, but it's a double up. It's not just the hard knocks bump. My The player I've been rising on is Keenan Allen. I still, I mean, we knew coming into this year he's super talented, but super talented wide receivers, when they have, 
you know, a, a, a team passing problem, they take a major step back for fantasy. That's what I've been projecting this year. But it's not just the bump of watching Hard Knocks and remembering, man, he's good. He's not good. He's great. You know, he's one of those guys where it's like he will get open and he will be targeted and you will kill them. <laughs> um, the, the reality is Mike Williams is injured to start the season. Uh, the targets will need to go his direction. The season will start with Tyrod Taylor, which I think if you look at my season long rankings, I have still the majority of the games going to Herbert, which I, I started, to, I started to second question that. Oh, I do not anymore. It's just a matter of wins and losses. If they get off to a bad start, I think that they will make the transition, but watching hard knocks shows me that this is Tyrod's team right now. And Herbert is the future, but they're looking at him that way as the future, not the, the current year present starter. So I will probably make that switch. But that's what I'm saying is that um, at some point, my rankings will account for Herbert, which I think will be a step down for Keenan Allen. Was was it the Cleveland Browns hard knock season when Tyrod was the starter there too? Do you I remember, Mike? I don't remember. Was that the season where Ty, like we had the Browns hard knocks? Tyrod was there that year. I right? believe so. I believe so. So yeah. Tyrod has a history of being the guy in on hard knocks. Every league that I end up with Keenan Allen as my wide receiver too, because the draft falls that way. I'm happy, despite the doubt and the you know concern about the offense. I just end up oh okay, PPR wise that guy's great. All right, I have a an answer that I wasn't expecting to have. It's Terry McLaurin. I had yeah. him. Woo! I Whose guy him. is that? That's your guy, Mike. Yeah, yo. I had him just significant. He's made the biggest rankings jump over the course of the last two months. I've always, you know, if you just watch a game of Terry McLaurin playing football, you know the talent is there. Uh, but when I when I started to, you know, obviously he's been great in camp. He's their only wide receiver. It's what it comes down to. He's their only real target in the passing game. And this team is simply going to pass the ball a lot more than they did last year. Yes, they are. And uh, do I believe Terry McLaurin can get separation at every level on a consistent basis? I do. Do I believe in Dwayne Haskins? Not really, but I didn't, I don't believe in Blake Bortles and that didn't matter to Allen Robinson. And I don't, you know, necessarily believe that Jared Goff is a top 10 quarterback, but that doesn't matter to Robert Woods or Cooper cup. So I think McLaurin on pure volume has a great opportunity. And it'll just come down to, is this a four-touchdown season or is this a seven-eight touchdown season for Terry McLaurin as to whether he can break into that top 12? But I think McLaurin has risen up my rankings the most this offseason. The guy that has gone up my rankings the most is Damien Harris. I mean, especially when you start at zero with like the expectation for Damien Harris, the running back for the New England Patriots, third-round pick last year, was... Zero. Even the, the even the Damian Harris truthers on Twitter had gone full Homer Simpsons or Homer Simpson just going back <laughs> into the bush like nothing to see here. Don't worry about me. I never said anything good about Harris. And then the the injuries just kept stacking up for Sony Michelle. They signed Lamar Miller, and it's like, well, okay, well, Damian Harris uh, still nothing to see. Then Lamar Miller immediately onto the pup list, although he is off now. But all camp reports from the beat reporters, Damian Harris is tearing up training camp. He looks great in all facets of the game. He looks excellent catching the ball. He uh, his pass protection is solid. He just he is one of the stars of camp. So he is a he's a player that has risen the most in my rankings and someone who I am targeting at the back of drafts if. If Damian Harris, if if this just turns into a really fun offseason fluff piece, so be it. But the fact that Damian Harris might be the leader of the timeshare for the New England Patriots in the double-digit rounds, that's very interesting to me. You are drafting for upside at that stage in your draft. If you miss, you miss. Right. It doesn't really matter. Now, I will say this. The Bears are the odds-on favorites to sign Leonard Fournette. The second team with the highest odds to sign him are the New England Patriots. According to, uh, I think it's Odds Shark right now who released those numbers. That makes sense. Mike and I were looking yesterday at what what teams in the NFL because we don't think Leonard Fournette is 
really that good. No, he's um, not. And we were like, what teams out there could actually be better off for signing him? And the Patriots were one of those teams we questioned, but perhaps they could uh, benefit from that body type. I mean, they've done very well with a LeGarrette Blunt back there before. And if there's one thing Leonard Fournette can do, it's LeGarrette Blunt. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's just amazing how this has, was a can't, has the poster up on his wall. This was a can't miss prospect. This was a player that was drafted by Jacksonville ahead of Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson. Top five pick. And, you know, he, he's been okay for fantasy. Sure. But not a great player. And not one that anyone was willing to trade even a seventh round pick for. With holes to fill on NFL teams all over the place and running back being the easiest place to trade for somebody to come in and play, he found yeah, no home. I'm like, really think about it. A, a sixth, seventh round pick. The chance of that player, I know they were drafted, but seventh round picks don't make the team all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. And the NFL team's like, nah, I'll take a chance on this player who probably won't be on my roster over <laughs> taking on the salary for Leonard Fournette. Is That's there a, rough. Is there a player that you become a, a larger fan of who's risen most in your hearts Ooh. in this uh, offseason period? For me, it's been Joe Burrow. Okay. I find myself actively rooting for the outlier rookie season, the success in Cincinnati, um, all the glowing camp reports and, and just his work ethic. It's all been very positive. Hmm. And I want him to supply A.J. Green with targets. <laughs> but I'm, I'm actively rooting for Joe Burrow. Like I has I've, nothing to do with my hope that A.J. Green returns to fantasy dominance. I like teams that, I mean, last year, Dalton Finley, they combined to throw, you know, their top 10 in pass attempts with that offense. I just think there's so much fantasy potential in Cincinnati. My team last night, I have Mixon and AJ Green on that team. So self interest. All right. Mm -hmm. Jason, do you have somebody that has risen in your heart? I can't really think of anyone specifically. I mean, obviously, I've always had a an affinity for David Johnson, and I'm rooting for him as a as a person, as a man in his new location. But I don't know if there's anybody who is just you know I've 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 grown brand new warm fuzzy feelings for. No, I just have warm fuzzy feelings for most players already, and then if I don't, it's not good. Fournette. Oh, uh, certainly not. Um, I guess Ronald Jones, Ronald Jones would be the answer from last season and beyond to this season. Okay. I, I, mean, I am rooting for Ronald Jones and I love the work ethic he's shown this, this off season living with his trainer, uh, you know, going out and running the Hills in Arizona in the summer. It, it, you know, those things show this just in Ronald Jones has, I can't make that joke. Uh, <laughs> it's hot in Arizona, though. Yes, uh, Mike, yes. uh, you can't answer Blake Jarwin. Oh, was that your answer? It's always my answer, okay. Andy. If you've been listening to the show, uh, it's for me. It's it's Devonte Parker. I want the breakout to be real. Okay, I, we're all scared that it's not uh, as given as evidenced by his ADP. Because if if you were all in, if fantasy players were all in on that breakout being the truth. He would be a he would be a second round pick because that's how dominant he was for fantasy at the end of the year. I want it to be real. I want Devontae Parker to succeed. All right, we'll talk more about him in a moment. Couple of Wait, reminders. There, did I miss a note on Devontae Parker? Yeah, you did. No. Uh, well, not not really. I okay. mean, he's All just right. not practicing. Fantasy MVP episode is Who tomorrow. Tomorrow, the fantasy MVP episode. Uh, we will share our fantasy football MVPs for twenty twenty. We will have the privilege of being joined by 10 industry experts with their fantasy MVP picks. Well, three well. of them are us. With Those are seven the seven experts, <laughs> and we're three of them. <laughs> if you're drafting this week, this weekend, <laughs> ultimatedraftkit.com. And now we're joined by Jason Moore of the Fantasy Ooh, Footballers. I've never thrown to myself. <laughs> that would be fun. News and notes from around the league. All right, uh, let's talk about the big news yesterday, yeah. the headline news, the concerning mm. news, Adam Schefter reporting. Alvin, <laughs> Alvin Kamara, unexcused absence from training camp the last three days, contract related. Believed. 
allegedly. Uh, per yeah, sources. Confirmed via his $2.1 million this year contract. I mean, we have faced this down with Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, Alvin Kamara now. How concerned are you? Are you drafting him? Aye. Let's put it that way. You, uh, We have big-time drafts coming up. Well, we, you know, we just drafted him, um, thanks to mostly me. We had three different players we were looking at at the number four spot. I won the argument. Here's the thing that's really upsetting about that argument is this was his third missed practice. How did we not hear about this till day three? Give us some update on day one and two. Um, yeah, I, w I would change. I mean, we were close. You know, we were looking at Dalvin Cook. We were looking at Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Uh, I, I would certainly draft those guys over Kamara. How wild is it that if you're talking about pure risk, when you're talking about those three players, like, mm -hmm. okay, who do you know 100% is going to be there on week one? It's the rookie. <laughs> like, the other guys, I still think they're going to be there. You're talking – very, very high percentage chance that they're there, but how wild is it now that the rookie is the one that is carrying the lower risk? I yeah, it's it's wild. And and to calm the fears of many that have already drafted Alvin Kamara, I agree with Mike. I think he will play. I mean, there's not a lot of options for a player in this situation. There's the option of sitting out some practice so you don't get hurt as you're negotiating a contract. But if you don't play, according to the CBA, the team can you know, submit a request for you to come back. And if he doesn't play, he's not going to toll a year and he's not going to become a free agent. He's not going to get paid. He's going to have to play under the same amount of money next year, which is the problem for Dalvin Cook, which is a problem for any of these guys. But what do you make about August 17th, 2020, 10.59 a.m., Alvin Kamara on Twitter? Sorry in advance. I want to believe he had some Chipotle that morning. <laughs> And it was a warning was a, for the afternoon to himself. This it was is a, a, it's and all around him. Yeah, I I will say this similar to you know the the advice we it's gave when good, you're though. when you're <laughs> drafting Dalvin Cook, you want to get Alexander Madison because it's not a shared you know one A one B. It's a we know who the next man up is. If you are drafting Alvin Kamara, definitely target Latavius Murray in case Kamara decides to take a hit in the money department and miss one or two weeks. Because if he misses the first two weeks, like he missed, you know, week seven and eight last year due to injury, Latavius Murray was the running back two and the running back three yeah, those two weeks. It's like an automatic uh, difference maker. We, I was in an industry draft last night, and I didn't know where to take Latavius Murray. I'm sitting there trying to make that decision. Like, how far is he going to drop? Where his normal ADP is? I didn't get a chance to get him, uh, but... Like you said, if if Kamara misses a couple weeks, or if the team, you know, you don't show up, you don't practice that week one, week two, do I will you have the same workload. I will say, I am not nearly as uh, fully convinced that Latavius Murray will come in and be a three down running back. I know it's this is a deep cut, but Ty Montgomery is there. Ty Montgomery has a more comparable skill set to Alvin Kamara than Latavius Murray. I think that Murray is will be the primary guy, but I don't think it's all of a sudden Latavius Murray is getting 70, 80% of the touches. Well, that, that's a fair name to be aware of. In, in camp, I know that Ty Montgomery has been playing more as a wide receiver than as a running back and, and um, you know getting involved in that way, but he is a talented guy who was not there last season. All right, he went, Latavius Murray went in the eighth round of the industry mock last night. Interesting. Tenth pick of the eighth round. Would you, I mean, is that, would you take him higher than that? No, no, I would not. That is about the highest I would take him. Would you take Latavius Murray today or carry on Johnson today? I would take carry on Johnson. Yeah, probably carry on. He's projected to be the week one starter. And if Kamara comes back tomorrow, then your Latavius Murray piece is nothing but insurance. Yeah, like, and to be clear, we're just relaying the facts of what is out there and trying to prognosticate a little bit. I am still very much on the side that Alvin Kamara is going to be there week one. This is just – this sucks for, for fantasy drafts that have already happened to put that doubt in your heart and the ones that are, are coming up. But I'm moving forward that Alvin Kamara is still there week one. The Cameron, Cameron Wolf report I was alluding to, Mike, another day Devontae Parker isn't practicing. It's been a week now. He's riding an exercise bike. He's not in uniform. Oh. So 
It's been a week. I, I mean, I knew he had missed some time, but he's still hmm. not back out on the field. That stinks. Yeah. Uh, Miles Sanders struggling through a hamstring injury. Adam Kaplan talking about the hamstring. He was spotted Sunday doing shadow drills, and I am, I mean, obviously I know what that means, so I'm not going to explain it. I'd like to believe it means shadow boxing. Mm. You know, because one, that's a great workout. Um, it's tried and true. Two, it's going to up your self defense should sure you run into sure. a back alley problem. I like to believe that he has a needle and thread, and he's trying to stitch his shadow on, oh. uh, a la Peter Pan. I don't think it's any of those things, actually. Oh, all right. But are you concerned <laughs> about his availability week one? Or, you know, <laughs> he hasn't practiced since August eighteenth in full. Is Boston Scott going to have a bigger week one workload? Is it Corey Clement? Uh, is it Grimace Face McGee? Yes. It, it, yes. <laughs> Grimace Face McGee. I'm hearing great things <laughs> about him. Yeah, I mean. It's not good. <laughs> look, I, I think that all the other running backs who are currently healthy and out there, the Derrick Henrys, Nick Chubbs, Josh Jacobs, uh, Joe Mixons, I'm taking them ahead of Miles Sanders right now because of this. But he, he does represent a, a gigantic tier up from – to, to me, from the giant question mark players that have switched teams and are older. So I, I will still take Miles Sanders at the end of that, you know, upper tier of running backs. All right. And then uh, bummer for Chargers fans. Derwin James mm. needs surgery, going to miss six to eight months. He's such a good player. Such a disappointing, uh, you know, injury. Any other news that you guys want to bring up? Lamar Miller is yeah. off the pup, like you said. I would uh, say the, the only other one to watch because we love him as a, a light round tight end sleeper. Chris Herndon got a banged up in practice. It is some kind of chest issue. Adam Gay said he had chest tightness. Uh, we're not sure if it's related to uh, some of the rib and lung problems he had last year, but this is something you need to pay attention to. So perhaps maybe you're taking your late round tight end shot at somebody else. Yeah. And that tight end, I hope, can somehow be Jameson Crowder because if he's just going to end up a PPR monster. Look, Ig, you are not wrong. If Chris Herndon misses time, like we've liked Jameson Crowder as as a floor uh, draft pick in that eight nine range, especially in PPR. But if Chris Herndon is not there, Jameson Target or Jameson, Jameson Target, Target. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what he would be, Jameson Target. <laughs> You would have to throw him the ball. And honestly, it, it raises Lev Bell a little bit just because of his pass catching uh, ability. Let me, let me Jameson target. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Let me read to you a, a tweet from beat writer in New York. I don't know if you guys saw this. Uh, starting Jets offense working against the backup. Six possessions, scored zero points, turned it over three times, punted three times, picked up five total first downs on six drives. Lost twenty-seven to nothing to the backups. Well, it's, but here's the thing: they know all the plays. It's, yeah. it's definitely related to that, yeah. not just overall stinkiness. It, just, it does bring some like PTSD forward from watching them play last year. Their, their offense was atrocious. The only other news I would bring up before we move on is uh, Amari Cooper has not been participating in team drills for, I, I, I haven't seen today's practice report, but the last three practices, Amari Cooper has been doing individual workouts. Mike McCarthy was asked, are you concerned? He said, no, not at all. But, uh, you know, that it's something to be aware of because I haven't really seen it uh, reported widely outside of Dallas, but they're, you know, everyone's wondering what's going on with Amari Cooper a little bit. Yeah, no, that makes sense. All right, before we move on, we want to take it to 100 yeah, yeah. and thank Head & Shoulders and Walmart for helping sponsor this episode of the Fantasy Footballers. I mean, look, when when guys are confident, you don't settle for anything less than 100. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? You don't you don't take it to 99. That's what Brian Ketron does. That's what losers do. You got to go to 100. Keep it fresh. Have your hair looking nice. Head and shoulders gives you up to 100% dandruff protection. That means if you use it regularly, you can prevent up to 100% of visible flakes and get <laughs> that hair. Whew, Looking you, 100. You're not at 100 with, with the flakes. No. no you're no, like you're 13. Below, yeah, I was yeah, going to say below it, 50. It's a failing grade. And look, I mean, this is everything in life. You want to win a championship in fantasy football? 
You got to go 100. That's what I do. I don't take it to 75 and say, this is how I'm going to play my fantasy. No. So why would you do it with your hair? Fournette takes it to 75. Oh, that is a – that's – Maybe a compliment at this point. Uh, but look, you want to take it to 100, take your hair up to 100 with Head & Shoulders. Available online at walmart.com and at Walmart stores. Pick yours up today. And one more reminder for fantasychamps.com. You can buy any trophy or belt and receive a $59 championship ring for free. You just got to add both products to the cart for the discount to apply. You got to put that free ring code and you'll get a free ring. And I'm looking at fantasychamps.com right now. There are two choices on the ring. There is the FFL Stunna mm-hmm. ring, yep. and there is the Bling ring. Mm. I've always been a fan of the Bling ring. Personally. I'm on the uh, FFL Stunna. If you win two titles, you can get one of each. Ooh, that's a good so idea. Not, not a bad idea. So if you're, I mean, look, every league needs a trophy. Every, every league this, needs this is true. Uh, uh, something to hold up, to flex all year long. Check it out at fantasychamps.com. Like I said, use the code free ring once you put the ring in the cart with the trophy. Or with the belt, and it, it will be free. It will be a free ring <laughs> at fantasychamps.com. And by the way, free expedited production. Um, so they're going to get it out to you really quickly. Nice. All right, you guys, uh, guys ready for the Let's main go. Event? Stash or trash? All right, stash or trash. Last year we uh, we had an episode just like this. Found John Brown in the late rounds. Uh, we're trying to look at some of these very very back of draft options and whether or not you believe they're worth tacking on the end of your bench. Whether you think you'd be holding them to see what happens. Mm-hmm. And you know, I can tell you from drafting yesterday, there are a ton of players in this category where you're thinking. Do I want to give this guy a chance to develop? This guy a chance to develop? Is this, you know, is this a floor play? Is this a ceiling play? So let's start at running back. He was once the slippery fish. What is he now? LaShawn McCoy. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch, Andy. <laughs> just smacking your funny bone. He just right went on. full macho man off the top ropes and took out your microphone stand. I My right hand is numb. <laughs> oh, just my. Full, fully numb. No respect just, for our equipment over here. Just, just what is that? I mean, I'm telling you. So was that the microphone stand or the table that you hit? No, that was the microphone stand. I don't <laughs> know why LaShawn McCoy got me so angry. Screw this stand. I, th- I, I right. think he's going to call him a trash <laughs> based on that reaction. Uh, for me, I am going to say trash because I don't believe that he has it left. I don't think he's going to uh, get the role. And when I'm looking late, I you know, I want someone who can win the entirety of a job. And I just don't believe that LaShawn McCoy can do that at this point. I think Ronald Jones is better at this point in their careers, um, especially as a as a runner. And they're going to need to utilize him. I mean, you know, there were games last year where LaShawn McCoy was benched, including the Super Bowl. Sure. So it's one of those things where I, I, I respect Bruce Arians. I know he wants the vet in there. I know that if Ronald Jones whiffs on some pass protection, the L- L- Sean McCoy will be in that game. He will absolutely be put in your, you know, in, in that game. But will he ever be in your lineup in fantasy when that happens? And I don't think you'll ever be able to see either the the follow-up game to a missed assignment or the mid-game switch to a missed assignment. So you're going to have this player who will have a couple games of relevance, but I don't think you'll ever start him for that. I think he's a clog. I'm not necessarily stashing LaShawn McCoy for what you're talking about, of thinking he's going to break into my lineup. This is someone I'm taking at the very back of the draft. And if we know anything about Bruce Arians, he likes guys that are proven in pass protection, guys that can uh, catch the ball, that are not going to fumble, they're reliable, and he often finds himself enamored with guys who are, as you would say, washed. I mean, we saw it happen in Arizona when Chris Johnson, who the, he was, he was fine, but he kept getting on the field over David Johnson, who was explosive and could make things happen. Like Ronald Jones, get Jones the ball in space. Better things will happen then at this point than if Shady has 
the exact same scenario lineup. But the reason he's a stash for me is week one, Shady may, may come out, get a rushing touchdown, have 40 to 50 total yards, and then you might have a trade piece, someone that you can trade with a with a uh, someone else on your team and go get like a big upgrade. Go steal someone's fifth round pick. That had a bad week one. Yes. Yeah, I, I think he's probably a trash for me. I, I get the trade angle, but I'm not going to draft for that, I don't think. And it's like if, if Ronald Jones goes down, LaShawn McCoy's, you know, what's his ceiling? How much work does the rest of the backfield get in that situation? His The ceiling, honestly, the, I'm trying not to be hyperbolic, but it's Tom Brady. Think about how much we have seen Tom Brady dump the ball off to his running back. Now, it's a new team, new system. Will that continue? But I think it's worth taking the chance because the ceiling then is Shady gets 60 targets. All right, so Jason and I both put him in the trash category, Mike with the stash. Benny Snell Jr., back up in Pittsburgh. Uh, all the camp reports about Benny Snell is that he's come back and he looks like a different player. He's shed about 12 to 15 pounds. He looks like uh, – Jason, you brought up the fact that they were they were asking some beat reporters in Pittsburgh, you know, is the – is the running back of 2021 on this roster? Yeah, they 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 posed the question, uh, do you believe it's James Conner, someone else on the roster, or someone not on the roster, the, the lead back in 2021? Their answer was they believe it's going to be Benny Snell, that he's taken over as a locker room leader this year, that he's come in fit and is looking faster, which that's important. He did not look very fast. Um, but it, you know that's what's going on in Pittsburgh is that he's coming into year two, having taken it up a up a notch, and he looks like the clear second guy in line. And so this is a question of I would not stash him as a as a hopeful player that it becomes a timeshare. I don't think Tomlin's going to do that, but I would consider in a deeper league stashing him as an insurance policy for a you know. To, to be the backup for a running back who, I don't know, has had a few injury problems sure. in his career. Per week. Exactly. I mean, if you wanted to say, okay, the running backs that are out there who are great, who's the most risky? You know, maybe right now Alvin Kamara comes to mind. Maybe he'll miss the season. James Conner has to be like top five for sure, maybe top one. Yeah. Top one is up there. Contract issue for him next year, right? For yeah, James James, yeah, James Conner is on the last year of his contract. Uh, where it it it's tough going with these two players because I think like McCoy can just get into the starting role through like through someone else messing up. He can just or play his way into the starting role. Benny Snell cannot. But do you thinking about Fab? You know, like your your free agent uh, your budget. Where you're you're trying to get these guys off the waivers. James Conner goes down, misses time, get wins a vacation, whatever. How hard are you going after Benny Snell? Like what kind of a of a drop are you putting well, on him? The difficult part is that we were here, in a way, right? Like it's cool to have a camp report that you look good. But we were here. James Conner missed time. We we Benny Snell was on rosters. It wasn't great. I mean, it wasn't something special. Now, Big Ben wasn't there, and he looked a narrative street. But because we haven't seen Benny Snell come in, and we don't know if Anthony McFarlane gets work, and we don't know if, you know, how good he looks, it's hard to, you know, fab wise. Yeah, I mean, people would spend up if you knew he was gone for the year. I just don't know if he's somebody that I'm looking at betting on a week one injury he's a he's trash not stash for me yeah i'm not i would not stash if, Benny Snell. if week one ronald jones and james connor were to go down i would certainly put my waiver claim or the more yes fab on benny snell so he's a, he's a stash for me i don't know if i would from the pass catching sure i mean that that could be an issue um you know i mean Look, he, he wasn't great. He had three weeks last year, the second half of the year, when he got the opportunity where he was a top 21, 24 back. You know, he was a RB2 or better, but they were, I mean, they were in the 18s. You know, they, they weren't Volume, special. right? Like a bunch of carries in right. a couple of those games. But again, I mean, you were playing without a quarterback with sure. a terrible offense that 
had no scoring opportunities every single game. Let's go to wide receiver. Curtis Samuel, stash or trash? Last mm. year, he was the, uh, you know, if Godwin was the offseason hype train that paid off, Samuel was the offseason hype train that went into a ravine. I mean, it was not good for your fantasy roster. So are you looking at post-hype sleeper rebound situation for Curtis Samuel, or does the acquisition of Robbie Anderson just kind of muddy those waters entirely? Stash or trash, late round Curtis Samuel shot. Uh, like, would you be let me put it this way while you're thinking about it. Okay. Would you believe it if you start, if you start the year with a good Curtis Samuel game? That are is, you really buying that as anything more than an outlier? That is an excellent point of, and I just talked about this yesterday. Like that confirmation week one bias, it's it it hits me right in the heart. If if I draft Curtis Samuel late and he explodes week one, I've done it. I've right, I, right. I've done it again. I, I you suckers at the draft did not take Curtis Samuel. I have him. You will never get him on your team. He is with me until the end. So that's like an unfortunate part of if you draft Curtis Samuel and he, and he hits on week one. It's he, the heart will go all in on Curtis Samuel, and I think I have to protect my heart from that actually happening. So I am not going to be drafting Curtis Samuel. It's funny you Sorry, say that. Kyle. If if he had a good week one, would you be in? I think I would almost be upset because I'd be like, well, I can't. I don't. I don't trust it enough to to put him in your him, lineup the next week. To put him in my lineup the next week, but now I can't cut him. I mean, maybe you could trade him. That that would be great. I would be willing to trade him in that situation. But I, you know, there's a lot of quality mouths to feed there you know dj moore is going to be the one with robbie anderson there and and christian mccaffrey i think curtis samuel has some big games but i don't think he's going to be reliable who do you prefer curtis samuel or robbie anderson i would prefer robbie anderson interesting I, I, just because of the money the 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 system he actually has more familiarity with this system uh from college so i you know it it's one of those where I, I don't think I want the Curtis Samuel, but it's it's hard for me to say that because if you just say, do you believe in the talent of Curtis Samuel? I'd say, well, yeah. Do you believe that the Carolina Panthers with Teddy Bridgewater could surprise and be a, a decent offense? Yes, I do. So th those things point me to Do you to believe saying, that Curtis Samuel could be anything more than the number three option in that offense over the course of the year? No. No. And that's the problem. Yeah. Here's the first stash for me. Nikhil Harry. Okay. Wide receiver for the New England Patriots. Okay. Um, the connection between him and Cam Newton and Camp is reported to be very good. Yes. Um, and I want the stash at the end of the draft where week one could validate a season-long trend or serve to potentially signify a season-long trend. If Nikhil Harry comes out, and let me give him a stat line, let's say he goes – Six for 110 and one. Oh, my goodness. In week one. Right? I can see the path where Nikhil Harry is the is the one valuable target in that offense for the rest of the season. That's what I'm looking for at the end of the draft. I am looking for upside. I'm looking for ceiling. And if I don't get a week one with Nikhil Harry, he will find his way to the waiver wire. Yeah. Is there any way that Nikhil Harry could be the number one option in that offense even with Julian Edelman there, I think there is a way that that happens. Um, I, I certainly am not projecting that, and I have not really liked the camp reports. You know, you, there's there's some camp reports talking about, oh, there's a good connection there. The majority of camp reports just on Harry by himself is that he's had mental errors and has not always looked very good. So it's not been a glowing camp for Nikhil Harry, but your point, Andy, of you got to look at what happens week one for any of these guys, if they just go out and stink, well, okay, we cut them. But what if they go out and have a good week? Does it help your roster? Does it turn into someone that you believe you can start? Does it turn into someone that the league will validate and say, I could trade for him, and I think Nikhil Harry does fit that and I, mold? I want to remind people what fantasy relevance meant to a Cam Newton target in Calvin Benjamin. Because you think of, ben oh, Benjamin was fantasy relevant. That equated to a 50% catch percentage, 63 and 73 receptions in the two relevant years, nine touchdowns, seven touchdowns. Do I think Nikhil Harry can catch 63 passes for seven touchdowns? Yeah. On 50% 50, 50 of his targets. 6'4", 225. He He's yeah. a big dude. And the first-round capital uh, backs that up. Yeah, and uh, you know, 
fun trivia fact here that I'm just finding out. Nikhil Harry, born in Toronto, Canada. Wow. So bonjour. Bonjour. That changes things <laughs> that significantly. Does. Uh, now, now I'm a stash for sure. <laughs> All right, so wait. Uh, final answer, though, Nikhil Harry, stash or trash? I think he's a stash. Yeah. I'm going to stash him. Okay. Let's... There's one... Before you move on, there's yes, one, sir. because we're talking about all these wide receivers that are going right in the same area, there's one guy that I would put ahead of both of those two for me as my stash, and that would be Bashad Perriman. Really? Yes. Even now, with he is, all just the for injuries. No, he's very uh, hurt right now. Yeah, I mean, that is an issue, but are the Jets are very hurt right now. <laughs> Chris Herndon is very hurt right now. And my point, you know, we we talk about Jamison Target and saying he's the only guy there. <laughs> oh, no. But Brashad Perryman did the Devontae Parker last year. He he At the end of the season, he looked like what he was drafted to be, goes and signs in a vacated Robbie Anderson spot. I just, I, I believe, I guess That's here's That's super valuable. Here's, Robbie Anderson spot. Here's why I, I, th I think that the odds of Brashad Perryman hitting this year are slightly higher than the odds of Nikhil Harry hitting this year. Interesting. Just because I, you know, Muhammad Sanu is still there. Uh, Julian Edelman is still there. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not confident that the Patriots are going to throw a lot. I think they're going to use Cam Newton's skill set. So uh, they're they're very they're very similar to me. Obviously, the stash draft or trash Perryman for you, Mike. I will not be stashing Perryman. I I see it. I did it at the back of my CBS draft yesterday, Jason. Yeah. I, but I, I wasn't happy about the report this morning where he is still have swelling around the knee. Yeah, the the injury has gone on for quite some time. I believe almost half of training camp on a new team. This year, uh, no. Let me ask you a question. The two coaches that I think are in the highest likelihood of a midseason exit from the team, hmm. it's uh, Adam Gaze, and then I don't know if they'd fire him or not, but it could go south quickly, and it's Matt Nagy in Chicago. Um, do you think those two guys finish the season with their respective clubs as the head coach? I would say... I would put the odds on, yeah, that they do. I think Gase will be gone before the end of the season. Hmm. I do, too. All right, here's a tough one. People need to know this answer, maybe the most important one. Stash or trash Jalen Rager in drafts because uh, the injury is going to run into the season. Yeah. And when you look at what's happening in Philadelphia, it's easy to say, okay, I'm going to stash him for a couple weeks. He comes back. He establishes himself. Then I got a second half guy. But that's really not how you play fantasy with rookies. The other thing is, is when he comes back, Alshon Jeffrey will be back by the time Jalen Rager comes back. So you will have more pieces to the puzzle if Deshaun Jackson stays healthy. Alshon Jeffrey's there. Greg Ward establishes himself in the first couple weeks. Zach Ertz. Here's Jalen Rager trying to find his way off an injury. So what do you think? Is it it's is he still a stash for you, or would you rather just because you can pass on that pick and go Michael Pittman? You can pass on that pick and go Jerry Judy, Nikhil Harry, or Bashad Perryman. Right, right. Um, I I am not even though I absolutely love the talent of Jalen Rager, him and Jerry Judy. I'm I'm all in on their futures. Um, I would not draft Jalen Rager in any draft because of what I already know. I already guarantee what's going to happen to my roster, which is I have a spot. That is taken up now. If I've got an IR league, uh, if, if you've got IR, which honestly point. in in COVID leagues, a lot of leagues are adding IR and they're just going to be available. Then sure, I would s literally draft him to stash him on my IR. Sure, great. That's but, a great great point. But if I'm in a normal league that does not have an IR spot, I can't take up in this season a bench spot for a guy who's not playing. Who when he comes back, we project slow to start. I don't usually draft rookie wide receivers you know AJ Brown was awesome last year uh, but not in the beginning that's how it usually is for and he almost... wasn't drafted by a lot of people right my, my point is the best rookie wide receivers over the last several years when you look at drafting them it doesn't work out in the beginning of the season here's an interesting one Mike Williams is injured is he somebody that you're willing to stash to see if that Tyrod Taylor deep ball connection I mean Mike Williams is a 20 catch or a 20-yard-per-catch guy. <laughs> He's a 20-catch-per-game type of guy. 
Maybe per That's season. That's better than per season, yeah. No, I am I'm not stashing Mike Williams. Okay. I you know, at best ball, I'll still take the the value there because he'll come back and you'll get the entirety of the season and you'll get those big plays automatically set in your lineup. But I wasn't really wanting him in redraft prior to the injury much. Um, so now while he's injured, I don't want I mean, we just talked about yeah. that with Rager. It's so wild to remember that Mike Williams was a thousand yard receiver last year. Like, he's very, very good. But I'm with Jason. I'm not drafting Mike Williams and with with hopes and dreams of whenever, you know, like week let's say he's back quickly. Week three. He's in there. Are you gonna start in week three? No, you're you're certainly not. So you're talking about al- almost a month in that a guy has just been on your bench doing nothing. Or and there's or 20 IR, players like, like him that are probably sitting on waiver wire that you can take another shot on. Yeah, and you want to know when you can take a shot on Mike Williams on waivers in week three? He'll be there, right. even if he's drafted yeah. in your league. He'll yeah. be there come week three, and you just scoop him up. Yeah, if he's drafted, he'll be one of the people cut yeah. to pick up the new hotness in week one, named Curtis Samuel or yeah. whoever it might be. Um, Final stash of trash before mailbag. The pride and joy of Mike, the fantasy hitman's right dynasties, dynasty team. Carlos Hyde. Stash <laughs> or trash, Carlos Hyde, one of your foundational pieces for your dynasty team. Uh, look, you are not wrong. <laughs> he is a big part of what my dynasty team is going to be doing this year. And no, I would not be drafting him in redraft. Like it, the upside of Carlos Hyde is is he's the backup. Chris Carson misses time, which I don't. I I think that Chris Carson is going to start the year. Chris Carson is going to be fantastic for fantasy football. Yes, Carlos Hyde will get touches, but are these valuable touches? Like Rashad Penny has pass catching in his skill set. Carlos Hyde can catch the ball, but that's where the skill set kind of stops he's a grinder and so i will not be drafting carlos Hyde. yeah rashad penny makes the window for where carlos hyde would be valuable for fantasy too small for me to take the shot on him as that uh, do you think we see rashad penny at all this year i do i think he'll be back in week seven after uh, after the pop i think we might not see him i i think we may not but i, I if he comes back to me it's not week seven you see it's the like chris week carson 10. report this morning just the praise by pete carroll's actually praising his players what that's who is he talking about this time he said chris carson has, yeah has been incredible yeah I, I, to me the way that i see it with the, the injury timeline is that penny will come back at some point this season so at that point you've you've got chris carson healthy right now if he were to go down before Penny is back, then yes, Carlos Hyde would be valuable. But you're that's a lot of ifs and small window of opportunity to to draft him. So he's a he's a trash to me. All right, we're gonna jump into the mailbag. I want to remind you there are over six thousand mm. Megalable entrants. Oh, man. So you can go to megalable.com, learn more about the largest fantasy football league, play with the Foot Clan, win a spot in the listener league. Jason, you may continue. <laughs> uh, do you want to do a mega mailbag drop? Sure. <laughs> mailbag. Mailbag. It's me. No, that's Batman. Batman. You, you sounded like you sounded a little. Swear bit. to me. <laughs> I can hear Al Borland dying on the other side of the room. <laughs> Swear to me. All right. If you have a question, go to the the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We're here to help. Here's a voicemail. Hey, ballers. David in Grand Rapids, Michigan here. Just curious how much uh, percentage fab I should spend on Chris Thompson. Uh, my waiver is clear tonight. I have David Montgomery as my flex and Alvin Kamara as my running back one. Really looking to uh, take care of the first few weeks of the season. Oh I think my. Chris Thompson can do it for me. Hey, I ballers. Am- Bye. I am so happy that we have this question because I've seen the how much of my fat budget question with Chris Thompson all over Twitter. Um, people want to be handheld with this decision on Chris Thompson. It's tough. But what a great... Thank you for giving us your context. Yeah. Thank you for telling Alvin Kamara, David Montgomery. Montgomery's going to miss time. 
This is why league context matters. We can't just tell everybody, go spend 50% of your fab budget on Chris Thompson. If you're four running backs deep on your team, you don't have to do that. Or anyone. I would not spend right. 50%. Even uh, this fine gentleman. Yeah, no, no, no. You don't have to do that. Like, you go... Uh, f- me. I know my number. You know, Okay, then give your number. My go number on. for this specific situation where you oh, really need say it. it at the same time. Okay, I like that. I like that. Okay. Get do, get your number okay, ready. It's a percentage. Ready? You're okay, saying your percentage. Yes, our okay. percentage. One, two, three, four, six. Three percent. Okay, Mike's that out wasn't with as 7%. helpful for the podcast. So Mike was 7%. Wow, yeah. you guys. He's out. I am loving this. Well, so you guys you? are that in on Thompson. I was 26%. I went 33 for this gentleman. Wow. And not for everybody. For this guy. Oh, man. Yeah. No, he has I'm, no starters. I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah I mean, if Alvin also, Kamara. Also, you're not getting him, Mike. <laughs> right. If Alvin Kamara uh, sits and David Montgomery is obviously injured, then you don't have anyone to play. You've got to spend up. And the thing is, is when you spend up at the beginning of the season. Mike hate, hates Chris Thompson, just week to one, be clear. I, I just know I, yeah. uh, week one I just think or preseason, you're getting more value for your budget. I mean, you, you, you get the entirety of whatever Chris Thompson plays as opposed to when, you know, you're in week 12 and you're spending – 12, you know, percent of your budget, then you don't get as much. So if uh, that's why I'm willing to spend up in the preseason and week one, uh, higher than normal. No, I, I'm all in on Chris Thompson. Believe me. It's just trying to think through how in are other people, the, the, you know, the home leagues out there, the, just the consensus out there. I feel like it's not very high on Chris Thompson. In fact, you know, yesterday, all of the questions were, is it Reichwell Armstead? Yeah, they were focused on other players, not – I didn't see much chatter saying how this – like this is a huge bump for Chris Thompson. This is the Austin Eckler season. Yes. That's the, the template for your way forward with yes. that type of running back. He's pretty good as a – just a straight runner, but he's not prototypical. He's not Reichwell Armstead or Justin Jackson or those players. But how many snap? What's the snap breakdown going to be? Right for Chris Thompson, that's the question. And if you have David Montgomery, I mean, if he uh, let me put it this way, Mike, if he has an option to pick up Tariq Cohen, but you can pick up Chris Thompson, would you rather pick up Tariq Cohen for five percent of Fab and play him in David Montgomery's stead, or right. would you rather play spend twenty five percent for Chris Thompson? I I think I would prefer to do the go the Chris Thompson route because of what if I what I believe Chris Thompson can become. I was just say that's it's it's a risky proposition when you're weighing all yeah. factors and probabilities and outcomes of what can happen. That's it's a bold move. It's certainly a bold move. But and, like to be fair, very different circumstance, but like we've we've seen these situations before. Uh, a couple years ago when Le'Veon Bell all of a sudden was not there at the beginning of the season, it was how hard do you go after James Conner? And I, I remember we had someone in our league, I think dropped 30-something percent on James Conner, and it was, what have you just done? This is a one-week guy. And then James Conner goes off to be one of the best players in fantasy. So, like I said, bold, but fortune does favor the bold. I think that the outcome, what could happen with Chris Thompson is – Incredible. Instagram question. Is Devonta Freeman worth a late round flyer? Let's make him a stash or trash Devonta Freeman. He is a trash. trash. I'm not I'm not drafting Freeman. I don't I don't see a place where he could go and really be relevant. Now, the 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 path forward is he doesn't sign until after an unexpected injury. Um, and he basically is a universal insurance policy right. that you're taking. You don't know what team he's going to be on, but if, you know, the player X, Y, or Z goes down, then they sign Devonta Freeman. But you're, you're, had, you're going with like volcano insurance and you don't live in Hawaii. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the, the, the reality like, is you're waiting for the super. Yeah. You're like, you don't need to do that. Imagine, just imagine here. Todd Gurley gets a big vacation, and so he goes away. And the role is open for Devonta Freeman to go in and get all those perfect. He knows the system. <laughs> He's going to get all the work. 
And he wasn't good last year in the perfect role for him. He's not going to be better going in uh, this year. He's he's a trash. Freak. Would you feel any different about Freeman in the like Freeman or McCoy? They feel very similar to me in their like upside and their you know if if Freeman was that third down back in Tampa, I would feel the same about him as I do McCoy, mm -hmm, but not too. much better. Honestly, I, just <clears throat> watching film, I, I feel like Lashawn McCoy looked better than than Freeman last year. Yeah. Well, that one of them has a job. Well, that makes sense. It's so incredible to me that these running backs that are still the most athletic, better than everybody on earth players, that there can be that small mm -hmm. little switch that happens. It may you know, did it happen to David Johnson? I don't know. But where you go from being in the tippy top of the one percent to like the bottom of the one percent and yeah. that difference is is like yeah, you're going to out of the league <laughs> devonta freeman right now is a superstar athlete i mean just right. incredible if you saw him out on the playground shooting some hoops you'd be like dang are you a professional athlete yes <laughs> and he's lost it that's <laughs> that's a sad it's just sad amazing reality. it's a small small difference all right we want to thank pristine auction once again today for sponsoring the show, Devontae Adams signed football cleat. That's pretty sweet. Why didn't we buy that? It was fifty-two dollars, Brooks. Game game worn, not washed. I I, I would like That's it. That's also this, not true. I would like it on the set. I'll work on that. Oh, yeah, cleat would well, it's just too late. It's gone. We can't. Well, well it's not too late. Plenty That's more. The point with put a, pristine auction. Put an autograph cleat alert on your phone. Thank you. I like it. Fifty-two dollars twenty-eight cents. PristineAuction.com. Use the code Ballers, Jason. Well, yeah, you're going to make get that mistake. Ten bucks for free. It's forty three dollars now. You could have no bucks for free, or you can use the code Ballers, and it's ten for free. I would use the code Ballers. All right, that does it for the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Thank you for your support and for reviewing the show on Apple Podcasts. It means a lot, and we'll be back with you MVP show tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.